What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here with Mike K. We're at Lincoln Financial Field. The Eagles just beat the Houston Texans 32-30. to It was it topped last week's game against the Rams. This is one of the most thr- thrilling games I've ever covered. Um, it was a heroic Nick Foles performance. I mean, the, the weird, they don't control their own destiny. They're not guaranteed to make the playoffs still. But, like, I don't think anybody could have felt as good as they do right now about this team. Like, the, everything is just rolling right now. Yeah, it, uh... There's something, there's something cooking here. Like this is and Nick Foles is the chef. <laughs> yeah, Nick's st- stirring some straws uh, and some drinks. This is the best they've looked in a two game stretch this entire season. It's not even close. Absolutely, uh, they are winning games as a team in, in every way. Yeah, yeah. It's not just the offense. It's not just special teams. It's not just the defense. It's everything coming together. I mean. They've been able to come back from really awful positioning, too. It's just, to me, this team, it's not because of Nick Foles. I don't want to say it's because of Nick Foles. Nick Foles is outperforming what Carson Wentz did at times, but this team's coming together with yes. their backs against the wall. It's yeah. the team around him, yeah. Right. Has, it, has done all, all what they need to do, whereas they weren't doing that before. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is just conjecture, but... Sometimes it just kind of feels like this team expects Carson Wentz to put a cape on it on and, and do it for them. Yeah, right. When Nick's in there, they know they clearly have to play up to the level. And in some in some aspects, that's uh, you know good and bad. I I don't think it's always a cut and dry of Nick Foles is playing better than Carson Wentz. I don't think it's the team plays better with Nick in there than with Carson. But right now they are they, they playing. are playing better with him. Yeah, right. Exactly. Doesn't mean they do. That's what they are doing right now. It doesn't mean this is how it's going to be for the rest of time. But I mean, Nick Foles. What was his final line? Because the the box drive in front of me is all so messed up. He completed thirty five of forty nine passing Jeez. attempts for four hundred and seventy one yards, a franchise record, four touchdowns and one interception. I mean, it's unreal. A, it's a masterful stat line. We also have to really consider that interception was horrific. It was bad. bad. Uh, we'll get into that. And he also fumbled on the five yard line as well. That that was less his fault, but he, I mean, he fumbled it like that's right. I mean, we, we punish we punish Wentz for fumbling, so we punish right. For fumbling. Yeah, you got to acknowledge it. But you look at the chances he's willing to take. I'm not saying he takes more chances than Carson, but the chances. It's not just like how many throws downfield you make. It's how well you can throw the ball downfield when the opportunity strikes, what the mood... Like, that's why stats are so frustrating sometimes, because I I see this debate of, well, you know, it turns out that Carson Wentz is throwing the ball downfield just as much as Nick is. It's a matter of when it happens. And I think Nick has this rhythm about him in pressure situations. Nick Foles really only plays well in important games. Have you ever noticed <laughs> he that? He only plays, yeah, I yeah, mean, it's true. He plays to his competition. I mean, look at look at how he did in the preseason in week one and in two. I mean, you look at the Falcons, the Falcons are terrible. He played one of the worst games I've ever seen him play, and they still won. Uh, Tampa, pretty mediocre. He played pretty mediocre. I mean, I mean, against the Raiders at the end of the last season. There's something to be said about Jackal that. Jacqueline Hyde, that's what. <laughs> He's the best backup quarterback of all time. I mean, I, I think that's... The I don't even know if that's a debate at this point, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I mean, if you consider, like... A guy that's a backup and stayed like Tom Brady was a backup technically, and then he came in. But like Foles is the backup quarterback, so he's the best of all time. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he is the goat of backup. So before we keep going, I think we need to talk about that final drive. Like so much happened on that drive. Like I, I wrote an oral. Like there was enough that I wrote an oral history after the game. Like I, I, there's just like so much that happened, and it kind of was like it when it ha- so the, the play before. Uh, Deshaun Watson made this ridiculous throw down the field. I believe it was like 30-something yards to a receiver I've never heard of who spells his name really weird. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I was joking. Smith? Was, Is that what I, he was? Yeah, Vincent Smith, but he spells it like V-Y-C-I-N, like T. Like, uh, I was like, he sounds like a created kid, like one of those fake characters on Madden when you do a yeah, yeah, download yeah. the draft or whatever, and it's like all fake. He sounded fake. Yeah. But anyway, it was an amazing throw. He got he kept his feet in, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, crap, are they about to blow this? Like This is, this is how the season was going earlier in the, earlier in the season. They weren't able to close it out. So... They get the ball back. They only get to the 11-yard line after Boston Scott returns it. Uh, Nick Foles throws two incompletions right away, and you're, I think they might have had a penalty in there maybe. No, maybe they didn't. They, but it was a third and 10. Nick Foles makes a throw. Jadavion Clowney's bearing down on him. He completes a 19-yard pass to Alshon Jeffrey for a first down. As that happens, Jadavion hits him after the after he's already thrown it, so it's past, uh, roughing the passer. Nick Foles lays on the floor for 
a couple minutes. I would, maybe that it felt like a lot. It, it felt like a couple minutes. I'm not sure. I didn't. I should have got a timer out. Honestly, uh, you don't think in the moments like that. Sometimes he was down there for a while. You know, some guys thought oh, he's going to go back in. You know, Nate Sudfeld started warming up. He told me that he thought Nick Foles wasn't going to come back in. Like he was down long enough. There's like, all right, I'm gonna. I'm just gotta get in the right mindset. I'm gonna go out there and take over. Nick Foles, uh, you know. Comes off the field, Nate Sudfeld goes in, throws an incompletion. I, I, I legit thought he was going to throw a pick, which would have been like the saddest way to end the season. Because it would have ended the season because the Vikings already won at that point. But then, th- this is kind of funny from like Nate Sudfeld's perspective. So he thought there was like a P.I. on the throw. Uh, he threw it to Jordan Matthews. He's and then he hears cheers. He's like, "Oh, maybe it was a pi." And we're getting we're, we're gonna get fifteen. He's like, "Oh no, Nick's coming in." Okay, so he went out, shook Nick's hand, went to the sideline. Nick Foles came back in the game. A couple plays later, he threw a great pass to Zach Ertz. Uh, a couple of Darren Sproles runs later. Uh, Jake Elliott lines up for a field goal. They try and ice him, and the and the kid knocks it down like he's done so many times before at this point. It was I know it was only thirty five yards, but you're still in the moment like, oh, is he gonna miss it? He, he missed an extra. I mean, point he missed an extra point. point. That what, what, that's direction. the thing. Like this was like such a like twenty seventeen season thing where it's like all these things were like going against them. Like you know you're thinking about okay he missed an extra point. Like why would we be confident in him? He's missed some field goals this year that he shouldn't have. And then he he hits it. They they win the game. They're still alive. Like I said, they don't control their own destiny. But like. That drive right there, that that it just it felt like we were back in twenty seventeen slash the playoffs of twenty eighteen again. There's something to be said about this team's resolve. You know, they've really only been blown out once. They only really lose close games. As a I mean, even with Wentz, they had some comebacks against yeah. the Redskins, the Giants. This is a team that is finding itself in the second half of the season. They hadn't won two games in a row up until a couple of uh, a month ago. It's crazy. And, yeah, and they beat the Giants, they beat the Redskins, they lose to Dallas. Come back, Nick Foles at the helm, beat beat the Rams, beat the Texans. And these are two quality wins. You can look at what Dallas has done. Dallas has got a couple of quality wins, but that's it, a couple. That's what the Eagles have as well. Um and I think look, they don't control their own destiny. We'll get more into playoff talk later, but this team's playing like they have their backs against the wall. They know it. They need to handle theirs, and they'll eventually get to it. Um, right now, I kind of feel like the Eagles are going to make the play. I, I, it's weird to say. We're because, like a, it almost feels like we're assuming it at this point because of how right. good they're playing, but that's the crazy thing. Like The Vikings haven't looked great a lot of this year. They're playing the Bears, who are a very good team. We're going to get into this, but... I mean, it's conceivable that they beat the Bears. I know I, it, they're the Bears might be playing for home field advantage, blah blah blah. But the point being, the Eagles might end the season with their three best game if they, depending how they play next week, if they win that game, they they, might, they would have their best three game stretch of the season, and it might be all for naught because of all the mistakes they made earlier this year. Right. I mean, this is going to be a season of uh, what if? What if we win one game? What if? What if there's a few of those games too? And what, by we, I mean the Eagles. Like yeah, you're saying it like from their perspective. The Eagles, yeah, from the Eagles' perspective, they're going to sit there and they're going to hang their heads and they're going to say that Titans loss, that though. that Carolina Panthers loss, the the Vikings loss. We shouldn't have lost at home. But like the Cowboys did. won on the road. The ca- yeah, I mean it, this is like one of those things where the Eagles really they're the reasons why they're the reason why they wouldn't make the playoffs if they don't make the playoffs. Yes. They're the only team eligible for the playoffs still that's not actually in a seed. Right oh, now. interesting. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's the Vikings lose, the Eagles win, they're in, it, it, or the Seahawks who play tonight. By the time this come, people, a lot of people listen to this, that game will already have been decided. But if the Seahawks were to lose against the Chiefs, and then uh, lose against and then the losing, so there's there's scenarios where they can get in without being the Vikings, but or, we'll we'll get back to the playoff picture at uh, towards the end. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the big plays in this game because there there were a lot of those. Eighty three yard, eighty three yard one. Um, so Nick Foles called a play. Was, well, let's set it up. When, when was it? It, it was, was the uh, last drive of the third quarter. Yes. So Nick Foles comes up. It was the, the first play of the drive too. Correct. Yeah. He comes in. He calls a play. Notices the. Uh, the Texans have a specific coverage that is unique to them. They they run it relatively often. He knew he could test it deep. He had Nelson Aguilar set up on a safety. Tyron Matthews, no, you know, He's nobody to, to... He's the honey badger. Out. You don't mess yeah. with the honey badger. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they mess Aguilar with the honey badger. Yeah. Playing out, beat him by a step. Great throw. Great throw by Nick Foles. And, I mean, look. 83-yard touchdown, 83 by the way. Touchdown. Longest of both of their career. 
You know what's funny? I put my head down. I thought Nelson was already in the end zone, but he, oh, he did the did, he did the classic uh, stop and then fall back yeah, in the end zone thing. The end, I was actually surprised he didn't. Well, get the, for the that. quote he he had that uh, you tweeted out say that it was, it was a great yeah, quote. He he missed the end zone <laughs> like he hadn't been there since week two. He was so happy he got back. That was his like big thing. And I thought that was really funny. Also, week two, you know who threw him that touchdown pass? Nick Foles. Hmm, Nicky. Nicky Six. Yeah, so again, um, this was an interesting game from a lot of angles, but that play to me was, for Nick to audible, a lot of people talk about Carson's ability to audible and his control of the offense, but Nick was able to show that he has a control of the offense too, and I think he saw something that Doug Peterson didn't pre-snap, and he made the best of it. I, I think... This Eagles team is so blessed to have these two guys, and blessed is a weird word for a Hashtag journalist blessed. to use. But they are I mean, really... bl- blessed would be the word that they would use. Yes, so. correct. <laughs> correct. I mean, and Al Nothing Gore said that, it too. Yeah. Uh, I just think this is like an unreal situation. I, I I don't think there's any parallel. That It's just so weird. But yeah, Foles, perfect throw. You mean the quarterback situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the quarterback situation. Perfect throw. Yeah, perfect throw. Perfect throw. Like, it was the best throw he's had. I mean, since the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Right. He also had a really great throw to um, uh, Zach Ertz at one point. He had a great throw to Darren Sproles. Yeah, I was going to say, so there was those two, they were kind of wheel routes when uh, when Sproles went outside. The first one was a touchdown. I believe it was 30-something yards. 37. 37 yards. Uh, Sproles did a lot of the work on that one. He evaded one tackler, broke another. We'll talk about him again, but... We'll, we'll say it every week. We were wrong about him. Like that, I don't even want him to retire now. He's so I he's their, he's their like most dangerous offensive weapon. Like it's amazing. So I asked him straight up in our scrum in the locker room afterwards if all this you know production towards the end is that keeping him going? Does he want to keep going? He goes, I'm just taking it a game at a time, and then smiled at everybody. <laughs> so but then, then but on the next drive he had another one where this one was like more of Nick Foles. It was like they, they have a great chemistry already. They played together. At, in 2014, Foles' his last year here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that one went like 30 yards. Foles like floated, like he knew where, he threw it to where he was going to be, which a lot, which is like an underrated aspect of like an accurate quarterback. You throw it where they're going, not where they are. And Foles gets in trouble sometimes where he throws it to where they are instead of where they're going. On this one, he lobbed it up. Sproles got separation. He got it. He got a 30 something yard gain. I mean, Sproles had uh, 76 receiving yards. Uh, he was their best running back. Josh Adams struggled. We'll get to that, but. I mean, those plays early on, like, that kind of set the tone for that offense. Certainly, and, and you know, what I thought was cool about this game, not to get away from the offense too much, was that guys you had never heard of or guys that were really young and not expected to step up stepped up. Deshaun Hall, Deshaun Hall yeah. has been here for two games. He stepped up and got a sack. I spoke to him after the game. He just said, you know, after everything that's happened, it's happened for a reason. He's happy to be here. He was wearing a, um, a Sixers shirt. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, I didn't see what number it was, though. I didn't either. Uh, or I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you talked to him. Right? <laughs> I talked to him, and I totally forgot. I think he said who. Come on. Um, and then uh, then you had uh, Trayvon Hester. Yeah. A huge sack huge on third sack. and one. Um, you look at a guy like Boston Scott, who who had some mediocre returns, but he also had yeah, a, that a eleven third... yard one could have been costly at right, the end. But... Right. He had a thirty five yard return during the game. Uh, there were guys that just stepped up all night, and, or all afternoon, I should say, and that contributed to this win. Um, Tim Jernigan, who was left for dead, had a nice run stop in this game. I mean, we talked about this all season when they were struggling. It's like the those kind of plays, those kind of players, they just weren't coming, they weren't there early in the season like they were last year where they had guys kind of under the radar making big plays. Um, you, you saw that quite a bit. I mean, and let's talk a little bit about Zach Ertz. So he, first, first of all, that touchdown he had was really good. The second one, he had two touchdowns. He broke the single season record for receptions. But the second touchdown for, for a tight end. For a tight end, sorry. I mean, he, I don't know what the actual record is for. Uh, it's like in the one. He's probably gonna get like forty catches next week anyway. But, yeah. um, but the second touchdown he had was a run after the catch type situation, which he doesn't have many of those very often, and it was really good. Yeah, and he kind of took on the defender, which is not... He normally doesn't like the smoke, as uh, Michael Curtis has said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that that gave them the 13-point lead, um, which it was 13 points, we should say, because one, Jake Elliott missed an extra point, and also Doug Peterson went for two early in the game, and uh, that was when Nick Foles kind of had a BS thing happen to him, where yeah, Geneva uh, kind of tapped yeah. him with his face mask. Like, it's the most clear as day... Like, I, you and I don't generally complain about officials. We did it for the Cowboys game. Like that was laughably bad. 
Uh, like that dude should be like fired. Like, I don't Nick, know. To say Nick Foles was heated would would be an understatement. He was livid. <laughs> I, I joked at the time. I'm like, I wonder if he said his first ever curse word. And Lane Johnson, I guess I, I didn't. I was never in Lane said this, but he was like, uh, I, I tried listening in to see if he cursed because I'd never heard him curse before, and he didn't. Nick Foles, he's so good, even in his angriest moment, where he's like, I'm on the road and I'll curse 40 times on my way home tonight, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that dude, man. I mean, he wouldn't even like after the game. He wouldn't even criticize the official. Right. He was like, you know. They're not, they're, they're not going to see everything. I went up to him after the game, and we cleared it up. And I apologize. Like this dude's apologizing for like he could have ripped his head off. Like Jadavion Clown, he's an animal. Uh, you could see the steam coming out of his helmet. I've never seen him. I've never seen him mad like that. The only time I've ever seen him do the that, Darren Sproles thing, right? The Darren Sproles thing, where he's like, "That's my teammate." Like that was back in 2014. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, yeah, where um. Somebody went, somebody went really high on Sproles, and he was just like, that's my teammate, don't like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he probably said it really nicely, like, please don't do that yeah, again. please. <laughs> Stop it. That's please don't do that. I'm probably, sorry for yelling. He's he probably he, saying, I'm sorry for yelling. As he, <laughs> I think he said bullcrap. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Bleep that yeah, out. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, we're not making fun of Foles. We, we, we think he's awesome. So, so anyway. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's, let's, get let, let's the, go position by position. Okay. We've so talked, we, should we just, Foles. Yeah, we've talked about Foles a lot, but let, let, I mean, let's break them down even more. I mean, those numbers are... Uh, the numbers, this was like the first time that Nick Foles' numbers actually kind of re- yeah, represent. Yeah, a lot of times his performances are like, his numbers aren't great, but like you have to watch the game, the eye test. Right. The eye test and the numbers test passed tonight. Besides, I, the interception was bad. He tried forcing it into Zach Ertz. The, he, Ertz might have been held a little bit, but it was still a bad throw. Uh, the linebacker on the Texans intercepted it pretty easily. Bernard, it didn't turn in any t- t- points, which was good. Uh, the fumble... Uh, we'll get into the tackles uh, off of the line in a second. Vitae played most of the game. Did not play very well for a lot of it. You didn't hear from him as much in the second half. But he, like, made a, made an error in, like, uh, his assignment. And that left Genevieve Clowney to only have to get by first Dallas Goddard. And the second line of defense was Richard Rodgers. And he sacked Foles, strip sack. It was, like, deep in the territory right away. Deshaun Watson scored a rushing touchdown. Watson was great. We'll get into him, I'm sure, when we talk about defense. But... Those were the two costly plays. He had a couple throws that maybe weren't amazing. Other, but other than that, it was like so, almost perfect so night, l- let's, day. So explosive plays. Those are plays of twenty or more yards. Yeah, how many did they have? Uh, they had quite a few, my friend. Um, <laughs> they had the eighty-three yard to Aguilar. They is that, a, wait, is that an explosive play? Yeah, that would be an explosive. <laughs> oh, okay, play. They had the I'm still figuring this out. Yarder to Jeffrey. They had a thirty-seven yarder to Sproles. Another thirty-something yarder to Sproles. Yeah, the thirty-one yarder, and then they. Which is oddly not on the biggest place on this list, which is very weird. Oh, they, it's just in order. Never mind. <laughs> they, sorry. Yeah, they had the two ones to Sproles. They had a 24 yarder to Goddard. They had a 23 yard touchdown to Ertz. They had a 20 yard completion to Ertz. I mean, this is. I mean, this is pretty impressive. Like this and is an impressive. Sproles had a 16. Game. It's not technically a big play or whatever, but Sproles had a 16 yard run late in the game that put them in field goal position. Right. I mean, it was a big play. It just wasn't. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, saying, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. explosive play. Sorry. I yeah, keep... that was no big deal. <laughs> that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just the most important run of the game. <laughs> yeah. So let's put a bow on on Foles by saying the man balled. The man, he just balled. He he balled. He like, that's what he did. And um, you know what I've actually kind of noticed with him, he always does better after having a game under his belt. Like, totally. he, he was so much better in the Tampa game than he was in the Atlanta well, game. He, he's even admitted that he's always been a momentum quarterback. Like, he, right. he, he openly talks about that, yeah. Um, and, you know, I think the pressure was... I didn't think I didn't think he came into this game with a ton of pressure. You know what I mean? Like, had they had they lost... Okay, it's Nick Foles, whatever, he's the backup. You know, they, they weren't going to make the playoffs anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's the narrative. He came in here, lit this place up. Once again, they started fast. Yeah. First drive. First drive, they scored a touchdown. Um, he was fantastic on fourth down. That should be noted. He was fantastic and also, on fourth down. We criticized Doug a lot this season because he wasn't taking risks. He he took went on how many times did he go for on fourth down tonight? Uh, Today? Let me look. It's nighttime right now, so he keeps saying tonight, but like it was a day yeah, game. <laughs> you know, hey. Um <laughs> But I mean th- this was the Doug of old. He was taking risks like that. They were four four on fourth four down. Four four. Like how many and, teams even go for it on f- four times on fourth I, down? I mean that that says a lot about his his trust in the team, and I think they're rallying around him as well. I think he and Schwartz are calling some pretty good games as of late. You know, let's let's go into running back. Yeah, so Josh Adams will start there because he's the number one guy. Not a not a good game. Yeah, he uh, he fumbled. 
basically when they had the game locked up, I mean, they were up by 13 points and he fumbled and it allowed them to kind of build some momentum. That that is the Texans. He's also not a short yardage back. Like, no, this has to we've be, talked about this. This has to be the game that like readily confirms it. Like stop trying to make fetch happen. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's not a thing. And it's unfortunate too, because it's taking down his, his yards per carry average and making him look a lot worse than he is. Not that that really matters. Yeah, yeah. But... Sproul should be their goal line guy. I know they use him for a lot of things, so maybe that's probably why they don't do it. So I said this on the podcast, and this is my theory. I've said it before. When Josh Adams is in there, you almost certainly believe that they're going to run the ball with him because he's A, not a very good pass protector, and B, not really used as a receiver. There were a couple of times in this game late that he was out there and they didn't use him as a runner, and it actually the play actually worked. Yeah, Nick Foles got on the fourth down, uh, did a QB sneak. That, by the way, one, one, before you keep going, there was one more bad play with Josh Adams that we both like gasped at where uh, Nick Foles went to throw it to him and he literally wasn't even like looking. Yeah, so the, it was a broken play. Nick Foles ran out. I mean, he's a rookie. His, ran out to his right. Foles just threw it at him, just so he had a guy. Uh, and Josh Adams looked like the play was over. It was the he weirdest. was like looking down the field. Like I, I, I it was mean, a very it was a rookie thing. error. Like he he's played like a veteran a lot of the time, so he's bound to have that. But but yeah, that just adds on to the that it wasn't his game. Uh, we talked about Darren Sproles. He's ageless. It's it's ridiculous. I, I he's mean, the most I, exciting guy on the team. <laughs> if he wanted to come back next year, and I was Howie Roseman, I would say sure. If you're willing to play for the minimum, I mean, yeah, sure. Whatever your minimum is. I mean, he's been playing for 150 I mean, years. Doug, Doug might beg it for him to come back again. So I mean, yeah, you just maybe you keep five running backs. I mean, hey, you may, kept maybe 45. he's better. Maybe he's better because he rested for half the season. Right. That's that. That was something that I wanted to talk about is, you know, he has been able to rest his other parts of his body during this time. I mean, I don't know about all, all of this part. <laughs> I mean, he's just but, a little guy. Yeah, but um, <laughs> here's something interesting. Uh, Wendell Smallwood really didn't play all that much in this game. And after he did that, in the passing like, game a little bit. He had four catches. Yeah, he had four catches, but, like, it, he wasn't, like, a, Not like a last consistent pres- presence. And you would have thought after the Rams game they would have forced it. But I said after the Rams game, he plays well when people don't expect him to play well. And I think that that, was, that might have been their thinking. The pressure was kind of off him. It wasn't about him. They wanted to go with Sproles. He's the guy that they've been waiting for, you know, forever because of the hamstring injury. Um, let's, score, let's, score receivers, let's tight ends. Receivers. Okay, so re- they didn't spread the ball around a ton in this game. Uh, guys were getting catches, but it wasn't like Nick Foles was looking for everybody. He started off with Zach Hurts. Ertz, Hurts. Zach Hurts. <laughs> Zach Hurts. <laughs> he does hurt. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other team. Does, I mean, but uh, when you but, catch a lot of passes. but Aguilar had an amazing game. We talked about him a little bit. He had five catches on seven targets, 116 yards, one touchdown. It was his break. He hadn't had a game like that all season, really. And uh, Alshon Jeffrey had a couple. Of, he's been really good after the catch, actually, mm-hmm. lately. And it's just it's just so clear that him and Foles just have a connection. Like I don't know what it is, but those two are really good together. Um, but I think it's we've talked about this a little bit every week. We have to keep doing it until the end of the season. The Golden Tate trade, it just makes no sense. Like they, I mean, it made sense in theory, but like the dude had three targets, two catches. I know last week he only played like twenty snaps. I wouldn't be surprised. That's all he played tonight. Um. He, he just doesn't have a presence out there anymore. Like, it, it just, like... There was a play early in the game where it looked like he was genuinely confused where to line up, and they got called for an illegal shift. They, they he were, was talking to the ref before the play, and, like, I guess he got, he and Nelson Aguilar had, like, a back and forth afterwards, and it... I, I just... I don't... I don't see what he's bringing to the offense and it's not his fault. It isn't. I should not know how to use them. They don't know how to use him properly because they do actually have quite a few weapons. They're just the weapons were not delivering, and now the weapons are delivering. Yep. I mean, Aguilar sense. clearly is the one who should be their slot receiver. Yeah, uh, it's not a question. And, you know, Jordan Matthews, like... I mean, they're targeting Matthews as much as Golden Tate. But Jordan Matthews deserves those targets. He's actually playing relatively But, I mean, well. that, that, that's the problem. <laughs> they got Matthews off the street, and they traded a third-round pick for Tate. Like, that... We, oh, that's we won't we won't dwell on this twi- trade Twade. <laughs> we won't dwell on this Twade too much. But uh, I mean, tight end Zach Ertz, twelve catches, sixteen targets, one hundred ten yards, two touchdowns. Uh, this dude's all single season catches holder. I think he's third all time in the Eagles history in catches. Yep, uh, he is. I mean, he's there's there's only so much you could say about. It. Like we said the same thing every week. He's just he's Zach Ertz. Like he just does gets the job done. People like to talk about yardage a lot, and Travis Kelsey's having an incredible year. 
But when you can depend on a guy the way that they've been depending on Ertz through two quarterback changes, through all these injuries, I mean, he's having an incredible year. Like, his numbers, if he was a wide receiver, he'd be a pro, he'd be getting talked at as a second team all pro. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the all pro voting if he gets second team after breaking all these records. Then again, Kelsey. Uh, has an opportunity this year to break the receiving yards record for a tight end. It's an interesting discussion. Those two are clearly the two of the best tight ends in the NFL, and Adam Crocs pulled off All right, the defense. It was an interesting night for the defense. Um, the oh, shot- whoa, 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 wait. Did we Sorry. S- yeah, what? we fir- saw- didn't talk about Dallas Goddard. Got- we didn't talk about the one catch Richard Rodgers. <laughs> I feel like we need I have an oral history that. coming about that tomorrow, yeah, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, Richard Rodgers, they used him on a screen. I actually kind of like the play call design. It was all three tight ends lined up together in, in trips and they just kind of tossed it to him i mean i'd like to see rogers get involved he was actually a pretty decent pass catcher in, in green bay especially as a red zone target um dallas goddard had some missed blocks they were, I believe but it, was, it wasn't his fault on that sack like he right. shouldn't have been guarding <laughs> david on it was like, like that one play where Ertz was blocking demarcus lawrence earlier this year that was either a mistake by vitae or a bad play call like that's just reality yeah but. i mean goddard Overall, it wasn't his best game, but whatever. Okay, so let's let's move on. Defense. defense. We'll start in defensive line. So Chris Long. Chris Long for sure. I mean, I would say it was a a kind of slow start at first for the D line. They weren't getting that much pressure, or if they were, Deshaun Watson was evading it. Like Deshaun Watson was really like that dude's legit. And they lost Amarius Thomas to a torn Achilles, and he didn't really have the weapons, and he like just made things happen himself. Like I said, to made up characters from Madden. But uh, Chris Long had his best game maybe as an Eagle. He had two sacks. Um, force a fumble, like he and he was. I mean, he was. Rick, he had three quarterback hits. Like he, he was pretty dominant out there for a guy who's who thought about retiring for the last two years. And I think what played into him having such a good game is when you when you really watch these edge rushers, Chris Long's so patient. And sometimes when when you watch Watson move around, like when you when we go back and we watch the coaches film on this, you're going to see Watson hold the ball, trying to make a play, move around, and Long kind of just studies him. Long's not looking at what's around him after he gets past, after he beats his man. He is looking at Watson and playing the timing perfectly, and that's why he was able to get the two sacks that he had in this game. I think what they've been able to do with three plus thirty defensive ends playing an, a, a, a huge amount of snaps is pretty incredible down the stretch. Michael Bennett, Chris Long, and uh, Brandon Graham. Chris Long, if he does not want to retire, I would welcome him back. Yeah. Uh, with open arms. I mean, I think this guy... I, I, I mean, think they're having a freaking campaign about him for Walter Payton. Man yeah. Of the, uh, man of the year. It was actually funny. The Eagles social media people did the Walter Payton man of the year uh, hashtag like a gajillion times <laughs> and then showed video of him with the forced fumble. Um, you know, he's actually having a better year this year than he did last year. Which Playing is a bigger weird. role, weirdly, because they don't have as much of a rotation. Right. Um, uh, I will I will say, like, they don't have as many quarter... Well, they had a decent amount of quarterback hits because they, as the game went along, they did better at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ten. They got like twelve on but one play. That there's Watson there was quite a few plays where where uh, Deshaun Watson was uh he avoided it. Like there would be like five guys on him. He got like especially on that last drive where Deshaun Watson scored. Like the play before that, he evaded a great pass rush. Uh, you mentioned earlier Trayvon Hester had a sack. Uh, Deshaun Hall. I guess they they split the sack in half for him with uh with Avante Maddox. With Avante Maddox. I mean that, for the guy to be in his second week with the team less than. Less than seven practices with the team, and he's yeah. He came into this game. He's playing the Josh Sweat role, and he's doing it pr- probably better than the Sweat was, honestly. Yeah, uh, he, he's making more production. He was a guy that uh, that sack was also due to patience. He was just in, you know, he's he and Maddox got to him at once. Um, you brought up Trayvon Hester. That was such an impressive sack. Like he just bam went through the gap, and I mean it was third and one. You didn't know if they were going to run or what they were going to do. Uh, Deshaun Watson is so incredibly hard to bring down, you know, on your first attempt. He just, just ripped through that line and, and brought him down. Hester's a guy that I think could develop into a long-term third defensive tackle for this team. We talk, we've talked about kind of the benefits of all the injuries. He's one of those guys yeah. that could long-term be a piece. Yeah. So linebackers, I thought Bradham, especially in the first half at least, he had a really good game. I don't, the numbers don't like... Flash, he had six tackles, one QB hit, but he had some really clutch tackles. Jordan Hicks made his return. Uh, I didn't really notice him that much. He did have a pass deflection, and uh, I think Camus got probably most of the snaps at the other spot. It doesn't even look like he didn't even get a tackle. 
Doesn't look like he did. I mean, the linebackers are fine. I mean, yeah, it, fine. it's just hard to contain Deshaun Watson. Doesn't matter who you are. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. Um, going to the secondary, Rasul Douglas gave up some big plays, but I thought overall he played relatively well. I mean, it's, DeAndre Hopkins is DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, I mean, Maddox and Rasul both they played sides. They both matched up against him, gave up some catches, but he finished nine of twelve, one of four. If I you would have told me that, I'd be happy. Yeah. I mean, like like we talked about, it was like the Julio Jones game from week one. Mm-hmm. Gets a lot of catches, a decent amount. Not like, he got yards, but not like, a lot. it wasn't yards in chunks. It was yards in smaller chunks. Like, And they made him work for that yardage. He, he was banged up, to be fair, too. He was banged up. He had some incredible catches that they made him work for. But overall, I thought I thought the DBs played pretty well. I thought Malcolm Jenkins had a pretty good night. Um, Corey Graham didn't do anything egregious. Uh, Trey Sullivan, though. Well, before we keep we 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 went through the front seven. I think it's important to say that they only gave up sixty two rushing yards, and that's include that's basically Watson. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah. So like Alfred Blue had fourteen yards, and Deontay Foreman had negative one on seven carries. Alfred Blue has like this like hive on Twitter that like everyone loves him as a backup running back. That's like a thing now. I don't know if you knew that. Like covering the AFC South, that's like everybody's like, oh my god, Alfred Blue. Once he becomes a free, feels agent. like he's been around for like a decade too. I, I mean, he's like the new James Starks. Remember James Starks with the I do. Packers? He's basically him. Everybody's like, oh yeah, man, that guy would be great to add as a as a rotational running back. What are you talking about? His middle name is Rotational Running Back. <laughs> but go, go back to what you were saying about was Maddox. Yeah, he, Ma- he almost had an interception that he he, he dropped. But yeah, I, I think Maddox is a guy that you know we talked about how Rasul Douglas just makes big plays at times, and I think Maddox is a similar guy. I think Maddox is a really spe- could turn into a really special player. Like we're gonna. I'm talk- shaking my head. Yes, by the we're way, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> talk about this draft for a very long time. This this previous draft they had. They're the least amount of, I mean, this was like a historically low amount of draft picks that they had. I forgot the year was it eighty seven. It, it, yeah. it, it it's when they traded out of the first round too. Yeah, I mean, uh, forgive my co-host. He is with a, with a sickness and he's yes. been able to get through it. I, I went. He carried me a couple of weeks ago. Myself, so. um, it's a long season. Yeah. Um, Avanti Maddox is a player. It's confirmed he's going to be a starter next year. We just don't know where. Yeah, it depends. They can they, they, maybe they don't start him at one spot. Maybe they move him around. I'm starting to think they don't touch corner. I, I'm really certain. It, it feels like that. I mean, it, they let Darby go. Even I mean, as long as Mills is ready to come back in time. Yeah, depending on how you feel about Rasul Douglas. Yeah, that I mean, that kind of banks on that and Cindy Jones. Well, you've got it's kind of how so, you feel about those two guys. So here's what you got. Not to get too much into future planning, we'll probably talk about it. At, you know, for the, end the of rest the season, of time. Yeah. <laughs> but right now, you've got Jalen Mills for one more year. You've got Cravon LeBlanc for one more year. You've got um, so uh, uh, Avante Maddox. You've got Sidney Jones. All four of those guys are getting paid nothing. Um, and that's that's a pretty decent four deep corner. Lo- I mean, Rasul Douglas. I mean, there, it, this is these are five guys that could play pretty I mean I don't think they're ever going to put too much of a priority on the cornerback position because they want to put so much money into the front but I mean Mills I think is their best corner if you're not counting Avante Maddox as an outside corner whatever position he is yeah yeah so I mean what you could realistically do if you feel really good about LeBlanc is you you would go um Mills on the outside Jones on the outside Cravon LeBlanc inside Rasul's still your main backup. Maddox at nickel, I mean, at free safety. And then you got Malcolm James. I mean, you really realistically could do that and it'd be cheap. All right, real quick, I just realized we forgot to do offensive line. We'll do that quick, do a little special teams talk yeah, about Yeah, we got to talk picture. about special teams. But offensive line, Vitae, <laughs> he's not their left tackle of the future. I think we know that yeah, by now. I don't know if he's uh, a Peter's hurt his quad, which was bothering him early in the year. We hadn't really heard much about it. It's prob- He probably has been bothering him. That dude's kind of a freak. Uh, in a different way than Sproles, but the first drive he went down, and he, didn't, he almost immediately knew he wasn't going back in. Vitae went in, didn't have a great game. Uh, Lane Johnson, though, was phenomenal. He shut down J.J. Watt. Yeah, he had a really good game. Um, I thought Brendan Brooks played really, really well as well. Jason Kelsey was... J- Jason Kelsey took responsibility for the Foles hit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was after the pass, so technically well, it wasn't... What but- I thought was interesting is Brandon Brooks said he- his first reaction was, what happened in protection? Why did that happen? I think the offensive line is going to look at that one for a bit. Yeah. Um, All right, let, let's... Going back to special teams. Yeah. I've got a grievance do, with Leroy Reynolds. <laughs> I was going to say, do your do your spiel about your okay. boy, and then we'll talk about Jake Elliott. Faced with 
probably the um, toughest situation he's faced as an NFL punter. Cam Johnston down the ball basically at the one and had the ball in position. To and down. DeAndre Hall like was at the ball. And then Leroy Reynolds comes in and like, like knocks from behind. It. Yeah, and it like was just like a we. It, it was knocked necessary. it and it made it a touchback. Because the, the, the bounce was not like a ricochet; it was more of a bounce, and so it was slow. And it was like, why is everybody huddling? I mean, it was almost like you would have thought that somebody fumbled a kickoff in Dallas, and they needed to recover a a, a fumble that was clearly not a recovery. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, sorry, I made a joke. <laughs> it didn't land very well because I was, was looking at some stats. <laughs> um, so. I just think Johnston has really been sensational as a punter. Uh, we talked about Jake Elliott earlier. He missed the extra point, but otherwise... But he made it when it mattered. Like, this dude, he's just clutch, man. He he, he's his second year he, in the there's league. There's some Nick Foles to Jake Elliott. Yeah. I mean, he, he like, weirdly will, like, miss some easy kicks sometimes. Mm-hmm. He, he's, like, really smart when it comes to, like, he's like, well, the wind was blowing, like, a certain way, and, like, I, I, he seems, like, pretty, like, centered, and I don't think it... He, he, he moves on from a... He said his rule is, like, one. he has a one-minute rule. Whether he yeah. make he can he can be happy about a kick he made for one minute, he he forgets a kick that he misses after a minute. That I mean that's that's a great way to approach it as a kicker. Yeah, that, like I mean there are a few if you can actually do it. Yeah. But yeah, um, special teams. I mean there was a hit by as much as I have a my qualms with Leroy Reynolds, he had a hit on DeAndre, DeAndre Carter, Carter that old friend you could hear from upstairs. It was impressive. Yes. Um, I want to talk about another special teams unit, and that was the crowd at uh, Lincoln Financial Field. I, I, I this, was this awesome. place was buzzing. I mean, the, the moment where Nick Foles went back in the game was so cool. Yeah, that was a that was a special moment to cover, just because, like, you could hear it. I mean, there was silence when he went down. Yeah, and then when they knew he was going back in, like, like I said, it was funny that Sudfeld thought it was because he got a penalty or something, because mm-hmm. he thought Foles wasn't going back in. But then the Foles goes back out there, and you, everybody in the building like, all right, they're going to win the game now. Like, you just knew. Well, as he was on the ground, people started yelling, Foles, 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 Foles. Yeah, Foles. like Skull. The, the like, skull like, thing, like yeah. trying to, like, get him to like, rise <laughs> from the dead or something. It was well, very... Chris Long claims, Chris Long had a great quote. He's like, I th- when he was laying on the ground, I thought they were after going to, they're going to go bury him by the, by the statue outside. They were going to get a coffin, they were going to bury him out there. But then, he... the, then, the, then the crowd brought him back to life. So I thought about Chris... He denied that the crowd brought him back to life, but he said it was a great crowd. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, thought about Chris Long when he did get hit and I was like Nick Foles would tell you to not worship false idols in your locker yeah 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 this is what you know false shrine thing yeah all right real quick before we go let's talk a little bit about what what's going on uh we're doing this without knowing what's going on with the Seahawks game but we can still talk about the Vikings and what that means going so the Vikings won the Cowboys won so the Eagles can't win the NFC East now the Cowboys did not choke so Camus was wrong (laughs) but uh so the Vikings won so this means now next week the Eagles don't control their own destiny, like we said. They do have to win, and the Vikings have to lose. I mean, no, it's or, the, or the Seahawks, Seahawks have to lose, lose out. Games. But I mean, the odds of them losing the Chiefs are pretty high tonight. But I mean, that, you guys will know probably by the time you listen to this. But uh, I mean, how? What, what's your confidence? I mean, the Bears are good. So. I, think they're, I think the Eagles are going to the playoffs. I just have a feeling. I, I just have this feeling that like it kind of it, it feels like that. It does now. I mean, you look at the matchups, they're actually really lucky that the Saints won against the Steelers, because how would you like to go, like, let's say the Saints lost out, right? And the Bears claim that spot, and the Rams claim the other spot. Nick Foles to New Orleans, and then, <laughs> excuse me, I joked uh, with Bo Wolf from The Athletic, imagine Nick Foles going in to New Orleans and just, like, running through the Saints. And <laughs> leaving with a lead. Leaving with the lead, uh, getting revenge from 2000, what was that, 2013? Um, but more funny than that, like, I mean, Wentz was the quarterback when they got blow, blown out in New Orleans, so it would make it even more people would have be, uh, have their pitchforks. Um, if the Eagles do make the playoffs, I do expect them to play the Bears in Chicago. Um, not really a, an opportune matchup, but then again, no. Chicago almost lost to the 49ers today, so you never I mean, know. Anything's possible with Nikki, Nikki Six in there, but... uh. Yeah. I just want to throw a scenario at you real quick, and then we'll end on this. Mm-hmm. So what if Carson Wentz feels healthy enough to play this week? Do they play him? 
and or if he's healthy enough to play, they make the playoffs the first game of the playoffs. Do they play him? I mean, I think Doug's in a really weird spot, right? Because Doug made it sound like he was going to go to Carson Wentz when he was healthy, but right? Like, so you, what are you going to do? You can tell Carson, like Carson's like, yeah, I feel great, I feel terrific. Yeah, we want you to be our franchise quarterback next year, but sit down. You're going to bench you for or, now because they're technically benching him if he's healthy. If enough you to have play. to bench, look, here's the thing: if Carson's ready this week, you run with him. But if Nick Foles goes into Washington and lights that porta potty of a stadium up, <laughs> you, there's absolutely no way you can go back to Carson Wentz in the playoffs. You can't. Like it, it's just the team. But, clearly but will has, they? <laughs> right. The team clearly has a rhythm. I, I, you almost feel like they still will go back to him, though. Right. I mean, it'll be that'll be. It's gonna be. It's the, like you said. It's the most interesting quarterback situation probably of all time. Yeah, it, it's bizarre. It really is. It's bizarre, and I think moving forward. This team, like this week's going to be ridiculous. I, I don't know. The takes. Man, we are thought be... last week was ridiculous. It means it's going to it's going to get louder. Argu- this was arguably the third best game of Nick Foles' career, behind the Super Bowl and the NFC Super Bowl, t- yeah. title game. Really, I the mean, best re- the best regular season. Well, the seven touchdown game, I guess, but that was against when the Raiders were. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, but the Raiders were bad. Yeah, I know. I, game I know. I was just, I was just game, bringing right. one up that was good. <laughs> right, but like pressure situations. This was the third biggest yeah. game of his career, and he. I came mean, their out season was on the line. Yeah, I mean. Outside of that Atlanta playoff game, what major games has he not looked good in, you know, the last two years? So, you got to feel like they're going to go in there and they're going to make an example of the Redskins. That said, though, you remember that Joe Webb game? I was thinking that. It feels like that. <laughs> Joe Johnson. like jo- Yeah, jo- Josh, Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson, <laughs> Joe Johnson yeah. I saw Joe. Uh, Josh Johnson, he looked really good this week against the Titans. They almost won. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That's the thing, is could you imagine the letdown? Oh, man, that would be tough. You'd almost hope that, like, the Bears had already lost at that point, and that's why they... Then like, you could be like, yeah, well, they saw the scoreboard, and it wasn't that big of a Yeah, like, the season was already over. <laughs> yeah, um, let me ask you this. They beat the, the Redskins next next week, and they don't make the playoffs. We think we've talked about this a little bit. I, you, you go into the golf season feeling... You realize we messed up this season. Uh, the, the discussion will be about Carson Wentz v. Nick Foles. Nick Foles pretty much, he didn't announce it, but he's like, yeah, this is probably... He didn't say this directly. He got emotional about it. He got it, emotional. So like, we, everybody knew. knows this is his last start at the link as a home the home team. And what a way to go out. Man. On that note. Yeah, on that note, uh, we're going we're gonna to go out on top like Nick Foles right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, guys. We'll have another episode for you this week. Then we'll be in D.C., Uh, subscribe. We're on all the apps. Uh, Leave us a comment. Tweet at us. And thanks for listening.